to build your personal betting game plan. My finale lets everyone know when my matches are finished. And time limits in the app let you know how long you've spent and when it's time for a break. You can also control the maximum amount you'd like to place on any single bet by using DraftKings Sportsbook wager limits. And if you ever find yourself needing to hit pause, you can use the cooling off period to lock the app for up to four weeks. I practice safe bets, and so should you. Visit DraftKings.com slash responsible dash gaming to learn about all these tools and more. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash responsible gaming for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Hi, Mom. Surprise, I brought you something. Socks. Oh, heat holders original. I use them for snow sports and around the farm. I also bought a bunch for my new work site. I know what everyone is getting for gifts this holiday. Heat holder <laughs> socks are the warmest. We use a proprietary three-stage process, making heat holders the softest, warmest, and most comfortable socks guaranteed. We also have hats, gloves, throws, and so much more. Go to heatholders.com. Use the code FOX to save 15% off your order. Free shipping for orders over $25. Heatholders.com. In September of 2022, our Office of Student Affairs reported to the multidisciplinary threat assessment team that Mr. Jones, they received information that Mr. Jones had made a comment about possessing a gun to a person that was unaffiliated with the university. The suspect accused of killing three University of Virginia football players was known to police. Christopher Darnell Jones Jr. landed on their radar in September over a prior conviction involving a concealed weapon. Thousands of people attended a vigil last night on campus warning those three victims, and Mike Emanuel has more on this developing investigation. Hi, Mike. Dana, good morning. The big question is why. Investigators are trying to determine a motive. The suspect is identified as Christopher Darnell Jones Jr., 22 years old, from Richmond, Virginia. He's been charged with three counts of second-degree murder and three counts of using a handgun in a felony. Jones was arrested yesterday about 80 miles from the university near Richmond. Investigators say the UVA students had been on a class field trip to see a play in Washington, D.C., and they had just returned to university grounds Sunday night when the shooting took place. Three members of the UVA football team students were killed. Devin Chandler, a second-year student from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Lavelle Davis, Jr., a third year from Ridgefield, South Carolina. Deshaun Perry, a fourth-year student from Miami, Florida. ...is broken for the victims and their families and for all who, those who knew and loved them. And they are all in my prayers. As I've said before, when I see our students, I see my own kids. Members of several fraternities raised banners near the crime scene with the numbers 1, 15, and 41, the football jersey numbers of the fallen players. This morning, the Virginia Attorney General oh. asked the public for patience. We have a lot of questions we want answered, and we're going to get to that. Right now, we're trying to wrap our arms around uh, the Charlottesville community, which is just hurting right now, and these students. Two others were shot, one in critical condition, one in good condition. The suspect is likely to make his first court appearance tomorrow. Dana. Mike Emanuel, thank you. We'll stay on top of it. So on the board, Dana, where do we stand? Republicans are one seat away from getting the majority in the House, 217. You need to get to 218 to do it, okay? So what's happening out there? you got about a dozen races that have yet to be decided. Just want to show you a little bit out here in California. Uh, they, they take their time in California. <laughs> I just want you to know that. This, however, in, this is a huge district, right? You see that's Congressional District 3, running all around the uh, Nevada border here. Here. A little more than half the vote has been accounted for. The Republican leads that. Kevin Kiley does. If he hangs on to that, that, that would be a pickup, and that would get you, well, 9,700 9, is his lead right now. That would get you to 218. If that does not happen, I'll pop out here. No, let's go right here. And I'll show you, yeah, here we go, Mike Garcia, that's north of L.A. Uh, he is winning his race as well. About two-thirds of the votes have been accounted for, but an easy lead here with 13,000 votes. That 
If he hangs on, that would be the pickup that gets you to uh, 218 as well. Okay, so if that all happens, right, if you just get one of those two seats I mentioned in uh, California, you still have to hang on to what you have. And Lauren Boebert in this enormous district here, Congressional District 3 in Colorado, right now she's clinging to a lead. Almost about 99% of the estimated voters out there, difference of 1,100 votes. She needs to hang on in order for the Republicans to still just be one seat away. And I mentioned at the beginning of this that California counts kind of slow. Dana, remember yesterday I was talking about California District 22? Yeah. Uh, David Valadeo, uh, Republican. And they were at 53%. Were they at 53? I think so, okay. yesterday. Well, I, I tell you, today, Dana, they are at 54. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's oh move on across the way here, Jimmy, and I'll show you. So, and, and I think they're at 53, 54 on Friday, on Saturday. Oh, yeah, they never, Sunday, it never moved. And, and apparently, they, I, one of the counties has one tabulator. So they said earlier today, it could be weeks. Oh, I don't understand it, but let's bring in Mark Penn, former Clinton pollster and a Fox News contributor. Just quit on the, on the slow counting. Should, should something be done about that? Well, obviously, we should have a standard by which boards of elections count things efficiently. And even when there are things that they have to wait for, I mean, there shouldn't be sitting here, you know, waiting weeks for a California congressional district to be counted, especially when it could be the difference between 217 and 218. Right. Would you have to do it at the federal level? Uh, I mean, because what you answered there would suggest that the states could not do it on their own individually as all 50. <laughs> well, look, but we know really that there are just three or four states with problems. Right. Arizona, Nevada, and California. We think. You actually clear up those and you're in pretty good shape. Right. You can find out. Here's what I think about that, Mark. There. You only see the warts when the races are close. You only see the problem <laughs> when the races are super tight. Uh, you know, that's a fair point, but they're going to continue to be tight in Arizona and, and, Cal and Nevada. Those two states are going are to be in play. Uh, so I don't know that you need a national standard, but you do need the governors to get together and form so. a pact yep. and say, look, here, let's share our best technology, let's share our practices. And remember, a lot of boards of elections, frankly, are patronage appointments. It's just if you actually were to go down and, and wonder who winds well, let's up talk in the about elections. Reasonable. Yeah, he, he certainly does, always does. Okay, so. It is likely the Republicans will get to 218 today. It could have even happened in the next couple of hours. So then they have the majority. Last week, President Biden said he would not do anything differently. But looking forward, like if you were advising the Democrats now, what is the best thing that they could do to try to position themselves for continued victory or even a re-election of Biden in the next two years? Well, look, there's something called the Problem Solvers Caucus, mm -hmm. a group of Democrats yeah, well. and Republican. They're going to have the balance of power here. If they want to assert bipartisanship here and try to reshape things, there'll never be more of an opportunity for the assertion of a, of a third force outside of the, of the forces that are really locked into partisanship here to try to break gridlock. And it will really be up to the White House whether they really form some kind of alliance oh, with the problem solvers so and try to move things forward or... or you know, they sit back Just and say, let's go to an election. That, what's your level of optimism for option A that you were describing? Uh, low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. get in? Low because the, the theme of the election is we, we almost won. We didn't do as bad as everybody thought we would do. So, so therefore, right now, look, people are thinking first, am I running for president? And what is that going to mean? And what kind of White House is it going to be if I'm running for president versus if I'm not running for president? Those are, that's, you know, you've got to right. make that decision first. And when does he have to make well, that decision? Well, now. I mean, he pretty By much has to make that decision. After Thanksgiving? Yeah. How do you gain that out in your own head with those two scenarios? If I'm running, it's going to be this way. If I'm not running, it's going to be... If I'm running, I'm what all about... What does that look like? If I'm running, I'm all about re-election. If I'm not running, I'm all about legacy. Okay? And so then, what do I put on the board? And the first one, swing voters, we didn't get where we lost, how we lost it, issues that we're, that we're a deficit on. Legacy, totally different board. What is it that I really want to But wanna, isn't part of the legacy who succeeds him? 
Uh, Obama didn't really seem to, yeah. you know, place that as very high on, on the legacy. There doesn't seem to be much of a foreign policy notion of legacy here, which presidents would normally have. It's been a real focus on, on domestic policy. Does he want to push climate change? So if his legacy is he just all about climate change, racial equity, and those themes that he sounded in the first two years. If he's re-election, mm -hmm. then I'd expect some pretty dramatic changes and working with this Congress. Yeah. Mark, uh, come back soon, okay? Love to chat with you. Yeah, great Thank to have you. Thank you. Mark Penn, thanks. Thank you. So the U.S. men's soccer team making a big change on their way to the World Cup, replacing the red, white, and blue colors with uh, rainbow colors. Yep, that happened. Plus, Elon Musk is warning Twitter might go belly up. Could that mean everyone's tweets disappear forever? Outkick founder Clay Travis has a few things to say about all that next. I knew you were